Hello and welcome to today's daily news report where I cover all the biggest stories affecting your life and money. You watch this channel each day because I keep you in the loop on what's really going on in Washington, D.C. with President Biden and the U.S. economy. So let's jump right in. I have a wild story at the end of this video that I'll share with you, and I definitely want to hear your reactions in the comments section, so stick with me to the very end and definitely leave a comment. President Joe Biden's plan to fight climate change by taxing wealthy Americans has just come to a halt. Senator Joe Manchin has flat out rejected supporting any proposal that addresses climate change or increase taxes in the near term due to the current state of the U.S. economy. However, he did support uh, lowering prescription drug prices and allowing the U.S. government to negotiate uh, in large volume on behalf of American citizens. He also voiced support for extending health insurance subsidies, right? We're right before the election, a lot of the subsidies that make Obamacare so affordable for people that make under $50,000 a year, those are going to disappear. And Obamacare is going to become expensive care. And so he is uh, on board with continuing those subsidies. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. In a statement where he discussed talking with Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, he recounted, I said, Chuck... Until we see the July inflation figures, until we see the July Federal Reserve rates, interest rates, then let's wait until that comes out so we know what, what we're going down uh, the path so that it won't be inflammatory to add more inflation. Inflation is absolutely killing many, many people. So he's basically just asking Chuck Schumer, listen, I know you want to get a lot done. I know you want to print a lot more money. I know you want to spend a lot more money, but it's going to add it's going to add gasoline to the fire. So we need those numbers before we do anything. Now, as you know, this is not the first time Joe Manchin has taken a shot at President Joe Biden. Yesterday in an interview, uh, Hillary Vaughn from Fox News asked Manchin, is Biden right to blame the data for a bad, historically bad inflation number? Manchin responded by taking a small jab at the Biden administration by saying, it's the same people that might have given him the information saying that it was transitory a year ago and it wasn't transitory. So basically he's saying, listen, the same people trying to tell Joe Biden the inflation's not as bad as we thought are the same people that said inflation wasn't going to be an issue. And so he's basically just calling them to the carpet and pointing out the hypocrisy. Now, according to sources, Senator Joe Manchin's name is now considered a bad word at the White House. So he, he's not made a lot of friends uh, trying to stop the government from spending a lot of money and adding to the inflation problem. While Democrats struggle to gain support from their own party, Republicans seem to be united, at least on one issue. Senate uh, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell stated, now they want to make it worse by having yet another spending bill, which they argue is some version of Build Back Better, which Senator Manchin shot down a year ago. And they're discussing raising taxes, which coupled with the interest rates that the Fed is going to have to pick up, likely leads to a recession. So they want to tax us, tax us into a recession after spending us into inflation. While new CPI data shows that inflation rose in June, retail sales actually increased as well. The Census Bureau released data today that indicates retail sales rose by 1% in the month of June. However, what some fail to account for is that this is inflation driven. So people are actually buying less things. They just happen to cost a bunch more money. And so it looks like retail sales are up 1%, but it's just coming out of the American people's pocket. They're not actually consuming more. It's the inflation consuming them. And uh, it could get worse because the Federal Reserve is going to have to continue to increase rates right up until they feel like the U.S. government 
can't pay their debts, right? Like they don't care about you and me. This is all about covering for the federal government's mismanagement of about uh, $30 trillion. Yesterday, President Biden met with Palestinian leaders after meeting with leaders in Israel. During his meeting, President Biden committed to giving $100 million of taxpayer money uh, to help hospitals uh, in the Palestinian region of Israel. So $100 million of taxpayer money is going out of the country over to help uh, those people in Palestine. President Biden is now the first president in history to fly directly from Israel to Saudi Arabia. However, many Americans are now eyeing to see what he will do next. Questions over if he will confront the crown prince are mounting. Many have stated that he should not shake hands with the crown prince or even speak with him. If Biden makes these controversial moves, it could end his career entirely. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens in these private meetings between Saudi Arabia and the United States. What we know right now is that he's already met with the prince. He smiled, gave him a big fist bump, and then they walked in to have their private meetings. So as of right now, the person he said will pay a price and will be held accountable for murdering uh, an American journalist He's now given a big smile and a fist bump, and a lot of people are not very happy about that. Now, the Saudi Arabian media and top officials doing news interviews about President Biden keep referring to the president as a diminished president. Now, it's not clear if they mean uh, diminished in health, diminished in popularity, or diminished in power or presence. They're, they're not really clear but they keep calling him a diminished president. Now, the other prince, Prince Turkey al-Faisal, said he is very confused by Joe Biden. He said he shut down oil pipelines, blocks his own country's production, and then flies to the Middle East to beg us for oil. This seems very odd. Well, Prince Turkey, more than 50% of Americans feel the exact same way, like, what is going on? Why are we begging you for oil when we're sitting on trillions and trillions of dollars of oil in our own country? So, I mean, I don't know this guy, but I agree with him. Now, some worry these meetings with Saudi Arabia are a waste of time. Uh, it was learned just in the last few days that Saudi Arabia not only is refusing to increase its oil production, but it has been quietly buying cheap oil from the country of Russia. And here's why. There is a strategic coup against the United States from multiple countries in an attempt to diminish the United States and to trash the United States dollar, the petrodollar. It's called BRICS, B-R-I-C-S. It stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and now possibly Saudi Arabia. They are having meetings about joining together as a new superpower and create, creating their own collective currency to destroy the United States and the U.S. dollar. So basically, it would be like the European Union coming together and creating the euro. BRICS would come together and create the BRIC or whatever they end up calling it. But the entire thing is to undermine the United States and undermine uh, the U.S. dollar. Now, not all of these countries are against the United States. The United States and Brazil has a pretty good relationship. India and uh, the United States have a pretty good relationship, but they're tired of feeling bullied by the United States, and so they want to move out from under the control of that, and they see Vladimir Putin as the new leader to do that, while many analysts believe it's actually uh, Xi Jinping of China pulling the strings behind the scene uh, but we'll see. Anyway, that's a big story in the news that could affect you and me five years from now, 10 years from now, maybe in my lifetime. I, I don't really know. The country of Germany is now telling citizens to start chopping wood and prepare for an energy crisis. Russia has turned off most of the energy flow to Germany and prices have tripled in the last few days. So they were already up significantly and now they just tripled. I don't know how much more the German people can, can handle. And they have announced 
that they can no longer financially support Ukraine because this is crippling Germany. Um, and, and Germany's in big trouble right now. Um, in fact, uh, France announced today as well that they'll only be turning on a portion of their streetlights in order to conserve energy. But many believe this could re uh, lead to a rise in crime as lots of crimes are committed in the dark, right? So anyway, lots going on over in Europe as they do their best to support Ukraine, but it, it's, it's coming back on them, right? Like, I hate to say this, but Vladimir Putin was right. He said, all of these sanctions will hurt the West more than they will hurt Russia. And, and we've all been seeing it before our own eyes. The owner of Starbucks was caught on tape telling investors and other executives that they will be making a map of stores to pull out of and close as major cities have crime that is absolutely out of control. And so they're just not making enough money. It's not worth risking the employees. And so they are pulling out. At the same time, uh, 7-Eleven, the convenience store, announced that they will likely close all of their stores in Los Angeles, California, citing that the safety of their workers and the amount of theft is absolutely out of control under the uh, district attorney and their leniency and looking the other way on crime in, in the Los Angeles area. The DEA recently saved countless lives when they executed a search warrant which broke California records. They confiscated one million fentanyl pills, which has just been deemed the most dangerous drug in history. Uh, they believe it came through the Mexican cartels. Uh, these pills are estimated to be worth $15 million, and there was plans to distribute them all over the United States. They were able to capture that, but it just shows how much drugs are coming across the border illegally. This morning, the House of Representatives passed two bills that seek to provide access to abortions. The bill, uh, one bill passed 219 yeses to 210 noes. Every Republican voted against the abortion bill and one Democrat from Texas joined Republicans in voting against that. Uh, the other bill also passed with a majority because of Democrats. These uh, bills may or may not make it past the Senate, but Democrats are laser focused on allowing abortions while Republicans are focused on limiting abortion access. One bill seeks to protect those wanting abortions uh, from crossing over into states where abortion is legal, while the second seeks to codify abortion on a federal level and make it legal in all 50 states and U.S. territories. Former President Donald Trump's first wife has passed away at the age of 73. Ivana Trump was reportedly found unconscious at her home in New York. Following the news of her death, former President Trump paid tribute by saying she was a wonderful, beautiful, and amazing woman who led a great and inspirational life. Lastly, Bill Gates is tired of being beaten up in the media for being a rich billionaire. He realized he doesn't need all of those billions and billions of dollars to live, so he's decided to donate it all to charity, right? Uh... Here I thought he was just a weirdo pretending to be a doctor and buying off the media by giving them over $300 million in documented money so that they would say nice things about him. But I guess he is a nice guy. He is a charitable guy. He plans to donate $20 billion. And the lucky recipient of the $20 billion is the Bill Gates Foundation. <laughs> what a scammer. I mean, this is all just to look good and to get massive, massive tax write-offs, but he's literally taking the money from Bill Gates and donating it to Bill Gates, who runs his charity, so that he's not taxed on that money. <laughs> Gosh. Let me know in the comments, is Bill Gates benevolent by donating money to Bill Gates, or is this just another scam by the ultra-wealthy? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I definitely want to hear from you. I cannot believe this guy. Like, did, did he not think that we would check who he's donating the money to? Sheesh. All right. It would be like Bill Clinton trying to get a, a round of applause for donating to the Clinton Foundation. I mean, it's, like, it's crazy, right? 
All right, now this is my update for today. As I know more, I will definitely come on and share more with you. I just had to share this crazy story. I, I apologize if I get a little too wild. I just, I read that today and I was like, oh my gosh, these guys are crazy. Absolutely crazy. All right, now I'm not a billionaire. I'm not donating money to the Stephen Gardner Foundation, although I should probably start one, right? Uh, but Casey and I are... Uh, trying to help out as much as we can. We've got $6,000 from generous video sponsors that we're giving away right here on the channel. It takes about 20 seconds, so follow that link below. You just put your name and your email and then you're contacted through that email if you're a winner at the end of the month. I'll make sure to leave a link below. Now, before you go, I just wanna remind you that you are amazing. Check out yesterday's video where someone was caught lying potentially to the President of the United States and it definitely affected your wallet. I'll leave it right here. Hey, I appreciate you being in my community and I will see you on the next video.